All right, all right. Here we go again. Thank you for joining me. I hope you stick around. Be patient. We're going to be studying the double-headed eagle symbol. For those of you who uh, this is your first video, my contention is the thousand-year millennium of Christ, the golden age, ended in World War I. There is the double headed eagle is proof of over a thousand year reign, spiritual reign of the kingdom of Christ on earth, where we lived as a Christian nation and we built as a Christian nation. There were the wars, there were the the bad things, I don't think that they were as bad as, uh, you know, well, I shouldn't say that because the plagues and things like that, certainly the things that you're, you know, they were bad. But my contention is also that those were, you know, the bad things were all by the same bad people. And I believe it is the Roman Catholic Church and the Freemasons. And I want to be given a chance to prove that to you. Because really, you're you're listening to a guy talk about things that are crazy, right? The thousand-year reign of Christ is over? How, how is this possible? You, you know, at least listen. Did you know that there was a double-headed eagle symbol? Did you know that much? And you could say, no, I didn't know that. You know, there's a 32. Well, at least it's not a 33. So if I have 10 people that watch, maybe five didn't drop off 10 seconds and go. It would have been a 33. Oh, no. Look, there's a 33. Probably country that turned out to go bad later but anyway there's a lot of them right there's a lot of them double-headed eagle symbol let's click on double-headed eagle symbol meaning oh see let's see what these people are saying about it I'm not sure I believe it. The satanic trinity. Hmm. Rising out of the ashes of chaos. Revelation 13, 7. Give authority to kill Christians with the sword. Huh. The pyramid. Same capstone as the dollar bill. Hmm. We don't know what this, where this is from. We're not, they didn't, we don't know. Hmm. But believe me. Oh, shit. I've got to stay on the same tab. I don't believe that it's Antichrist. It is Christian. These people were the ones, the nations that kept the Bible alive. That fought Rome at every turn that produced the Presbyterians and the the Christians, the uh, the people from the mountains in France, the people from the area that now we call Poland, uh, Russia, Latvia. Those people are should be your heroes. They're my heroes. And these double-headed eagles are in no way satanic at all. It doesn't matter to me if somebody copied them and the Masons used it or whatever. It's baloney. 
Well, let's look at the Russian ones, okay? Let's see. In all of these, you'll see the Christian cross. In all of them. These were Christian countries. All the countries had the double-headed eagle. Stick with me and you'll see it. It was everywhere. It was the symbol for Christ. Germany. Double-headed. It split off to the single-headed eagle. Some countries started doing it as early as 1800, maybe a little earlier. But for a thousand years, it was this, double-headed, then it went to this. And most of them are facing in the same direction. You see, it's facing to what would be our left as we're looking at it, its right. And the Nazi ones that have the eagle, they're all facing to the right. And I can't be sure, but so far, it... Well, now there's a Nazi one and it's facing to the left. So I don't know if they're having these things flipped. All of the Nazi eagles that I've seen usually are facing left. Same with the Prussian, but not the uh, Habsburgs, the Ottoman and the Kaisers. I suspect those guys are, are not, uh, not, Maybe not the bad guys. The the Nazis, I'm convinced, they are Aryans. They are the bad guys. They were being helped by the, uh, the Red Cross as Catholics. They were being helped by the Vatican and the Pope. It was just too much. There was just too much. Now, let's see, here's a Hittite double eagle. Let's click on that. Okay, so... As you can see, I you know, I'm well within the thousand years. And don't tell me that you can't count them because just because they're saying, oh, this is Hittite, we don't know that. The two-headed eagle was the Hittite religious symbol. The famous Austrian eagle is said to have been derived from this symbol seen on Syrian temples during the Crusades. Oh, yeah. See, that's what they say. Yeah, they just copied it. We said, you know what? We like it. Let's make that our national symbol for a thousand years. Do you do you who do you want to believe? Go ahead. Believe who you want. Well, they removed that one. But there's another griffin, you know, popularized, shoot, almost, what, 30, 40% of the coat of arms in England have a griffin on them. Well, look at that one. How's that a double-headed eagle? The ancient Persian eagle symbol. I guess it is. Holy smokes. Looks like that one flying griffin door. Thing from Harry Potter, right? You better bow down to me. Be nice to me. You know what I'm talking about. So anyway, we got Hittite double-headed eagles. All right, let's go back. We had Russian. We had German. We've seen those. Serbian eagle. It'll be double headed, I bet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Serbia is another one of those countries like Armenia that was like right there at the beginning of uh, Christianity. And 
There's that one symbol again, too. Remember? So that's that same symbol, but it's closed in. I think that's the flat earth symbol. That's a tattoo. Jeez Louise. Let's look at some of the Serbian coat of arms. I'll show you. They'll all be Christian and they'll all have double eagles or eagles. Look at that one. Huh? Oh, yeah, there was no no uh, Oriental influence. They didn't know nothing about the Orient until Marco Polo went there. Come on, you guys. Watch my other videos and wake up. Probably I'm can tell i'm just making this video because i was so tired of researching i wanted to just do something the research i'm doing is so it's great it's it, i'm excited to be learning it but it's it's going to be hard to present to people i mean people have been trying to present it for years they're everywhere right double-headed eagles on the coat of arms Serbian, Serbian, Serbians. Swabia. And Bosnia is another one. What do we know about Bosnia? Well, if you're, if you're my age, you know that about Bosnia and Herzegovina. For some reason, uh, President Clinton went in there and wagged the dog about a couple of things during the Mona Lewinsky scandal and they made some movies about it and stuff like that. You know, with all of the Christian things in the Bosnian area, the coat of arms with Bosnia having, uh, you know, Muslim symbol like that. That's it's really, if you stick with me, you'll, you'll find out that it's not that unusual. Let's look at some of the other, uh, you know, like I know that I'll find them, the double-headed eagle in Romania. Uh, let's see. How about Portugal? That's that's right in the middle here. Let's look for uh, Portugal's double-headed eagle. Okay. You know it's going to be there. There it is. Right there. Oh, that's the Holy Roman coat of arms. They're big in Portugal. We'll look for something else. There's an eagle. Where's the double-headed one? Come on, Portugal, come through. You know, I've been wrong before. I don't think I'm wrong that there is one. I just don't know if it's on here. If every country had one, like in their coat of arms, they usually always had two because it started with two. Let's go. Let's go. Well, there's the one facing right, facing right. Well, this can go both ways right there. Well, I don't see a double-headed one here. We're going to look up something else here. How about Spain? Doublehead me. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, there we go. There's one. Toledo. Thank you, Toledo. God bless you. Bless you. That's probably an old one, too. 
Toledo, Spain. I know that they are famous for their uh, sword making, or knife making. Yeah, they got there was a steel. Somebody there was good. So you know they've got their the double headed eagle. They have the eagle. There's another one. Spanish. Okay. Well, hey, we just looked in Spain for crying out loud. Doggone it. I told you. Boy, that is an intricate one, isn't it? Man. Big. You guys out there like to be there. I'm going to count the feathers. You know, this symbol here. I'm not sure I trust that one too much. There's some weird stuff going on in here, huh? Another griffin fighting. What's up? Mexico, let's check it out. Mexico coat of arms. Well, they got the ego. Hello, eagle. Yeah, he's fighting a snake. That's always a good sign. There you go, eagle. There you go, eat that snake. Yeah, get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to have to go to British coat of arms here. Let's see. These guys, they're busy. Man, they got some busy, some weird stuff going on. I'm, I am the, the Ten Virgins. There you go. Virgin Islands. Okay. You got the double-headed unicorns going. I'm going to have to get in to see what's going on with that unicorn stuff. <laughs> Pretty weird, huh? Where am I here? British coat of arms? Man, I would have thought there'd be a bunch of them on there. I'm telling you, England is the England is bad. They've been bad. They're bad, bad, bad. Not all English people are bad, but as a as a whole, man. I'm gonna get into that uh the great debasement. Have you ever heard about the great debasement? I guess it was the only time back when they were striking their old gold coins and they had the uh, you know the the first real hiccup in the thousand year reign of christ that i could find in my research so far has been one of the one of the henry's i don't want to blame henry the eighth but i think it was him and he actually uh got busted by all of the other countries in europe for Debasing gold, you know, selling a one ounce coal, gold coin is 24 carat, and he was knocking it down. I'm not sure how much he lowered it, but, you know, whether he made it, you know, 18 carat or 20 carat, but whatever it was, I just haven't had time to research it yet because I'm just, you know, I'm just spending, man, since uh, almost a whole year now. I got off an art project no internet anything for like two years was already a believer in a geostationary uh earth and that it didn't move because of my deeply held belief that the bible is true and that god's word is true and that he said the earth will not be moved and so i looked at it and found the math works both ways so i went with in every sunday school class and everything else saying 
I might as well believe it's not moving because the math works both ways. And that's all I knew then. But when I came out back and then saw that they had been leaking it and the end was near, you know, everybody's going like, do your own research. I started. I did. And here's what I got. That's what I got. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Thanks a lot if you made it to the end. I really appreciate it. That means the Lord is using you. And hopefully someday you can, you know, you can teach me. God bless you. Take care.